Whoever is listening, welcome back. My name is Grayson Man. This is Man with the Plan podcast, episode 43. Today, guys, is a special episode. I join the Down and Out Sports Podcast, a very funny outside the box, great group of guys. We talk MLB, we talk Team USA basketball, football news, and so much more. I know you guys will enjoy it as much as I did during the interview. Guys, without further ado, the Down and Out Sports Podcast. What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to another episode of the Down and Out Sports Podcast. I'm joined here again by Rhett and Palmer. How are we doing, guys? Man, if I was any better, it'd cost more. You hear me? I like the saying. I love it, son. Doing good, though. Doing good. Rhett, it's your um, birthday. Twenty. Oh, yeah, happy birthday to Rhett, happy birthday. by the way. I appreciate and, uh, it. Up 21st, finally. Man, shout man, out, shout out Rhett, though. Alex didn't make it on the podcast on his 21st. He was long yeah, gone. That was NFL draft night, 21st birthday. Didn't. Wasn't a great combo. Um, but... Anyways, we got a special guest for y'all today, um, owner and host of the Man with the Plan podcast, introducing Grayson Mann. How are we doing, buddy? I'm doing great. I don't have a creative saying like Palmer, but it is an honor to have to be on you guys' show. Thank you guys for having me. Hey, we appreciate you for having us on yours as well. Um, but uh, we got a lot of sports for y'all today, man. We got, we got baseball, football, uh, college and professional, basketball. Um, we got a lot to talk about today, guys. So, um, what you say we go ahead and jump into a little bit of college football realignment? Um, rumors circulating that Texas and OU, as in Oklahoma, are going to be joining the SEC. Um, Palmer, first first thought reaction. Um, I mean, it's just plan one or step one to eliminating the NCAA. I think they're just a couple years away from not even being anything. You hear me when? So you're getting all these people wanting to move into this one conference. I don't know exactly what happened over in England or Europe or somewhere, but you know how they did with their soccer leagues? They created like a super league. I feel like this is where football is going to go. And when the football, I feel like your top guys, Alabama, Georgia, Clemson, Ohio State, even like Oklahoma's and the old, like, I guess, uh, storied franchises like USC and Texas, they'll also go to this division, and I think they'll break away from the NCAA, and I think it's only a matter of time once you start this because I've heard rumors of Michigan, Ohio State, Florida State, and Clemson wanting to move into the SEC as well. And then, what, there's no other – there's no other either national championship contender if all those guys move into the SEC. So then what, your SEC champion is your national champion for college football? So I think they'll just break into their own thing, but that might be a hot take. Maybe not. I don't know, but that's my two cents. All right, Grayson, kind of holding us in here. Let's talk about Texas and OU specifically, and uh, we'll get into a second about super conferences, but what do you think just specifically about Texas and OU wanting to join the, the SEC? I think that there's a lot to unpack, especially you get like such a big reaction from hearing that Texas and OU want to leave the Big 12, the conference that they've particularly, I guess in Oklahoma's case, have dominated, and especially this last decade. From the past like six 20, years. Yep. They've Oklahoma, years. Texas is still trying to find themselves, trying to, I guess they're trying to find what they used to be when they were winning championships with Mac Brown. It's been a whole like me trying to find the right words to say it. I think if they move to the SEC, it's great for Bama. It's great for whoever's dominating that conference. I think that their style of play, more offense, more spectacle is going to – it's going to come to the SEC, and they're going to learn that they're going to get hit in the mouth. They're going to be playing against NFL players on each – each position is going to have an NFL draft pick. It's going to be really interesting to see how this unfolds. When I personally played Texas, uh, they handed it to us. <laughs> Texas was back after that night. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think this is all about the it's all about the dollar bill, um, and and I and like what Palmer was alluding to. I think that's a, the eventual place where this ends up because of the dollar bill. Because there's millions and millions of dollars. I I, I believe somewhere I read it, because of Texas and OU joining the conference, it it, it splits the pie to like seventy to seventy five million a a, a a university just for football, and. That's $20 million more than what they were making. So th this is a no-brainer. It's going to happen, in my opinion. Um, I've heard from multiple people at UGA that this is all but a done deal at this point. Um, 
pretty much all 14 universities in the SEC are on board, except Texas A&M, but they're going to have to get over it because now they're going to be little brother again. Um, I kind of do feel bad for the Aggies a little bit, um, even though they're stealing all our recruits. But anyways. But this, this entire I, summer has been – this entire summer has been a complete domino effect, especially because we've come off a pandemic season. A lot of programs are really striving, trying to find some money because it's all like you said, it's all about the dollar bill. And – with the 12th team playoff coming, these conference realignments, I think we're all, all these programs are trying to find their way to get back on track, especially with the limited capacity of fans, TV deals. We got to find a way to keep things fresh, especially after a really just rough 2020. Yeah. Go ahead, Rhett. What are you saying? Um, I just want to talk I, real quick. I think, I mean, Texas, Oklahoma, I think that's a stupid thing. I think Oklahoma would survive in the SEC. I think they would. But Texas, I, I think they're going to be at the bottom. Like, I mean, what, they, they always win the first three, four games. You know, they're great, and then they just blow the season pretty much. But I think, why wouldn't they – I don't know. I think Texas, Oklahoma, bring them down to the ACC. Everybody talks about the ACC is not, you know, not strong enough. Well, I mean, these two teams would pick up the pace a little bit. I mean, um, I think that would be a great idea, honestly. Why join the SEC? Like, you're not – you're not good enough to play in SEC. I mean, I'm not an SEC fan, but I say that because, I mean, you know, it's the SEC. And I would like – I would have loved to see him in the ACC. That's my my take on that. The, the yeah, crazy thing is, is – though, like, Texas and Oklahoma are in the middle of the United States. All the ACC is on the East hey, Coast. Yeah, that kind of takes the it's coast like, out of the Atlantic <laughs> Coast. Well, coast. All right. You know, I mean, everybody's moving around. Why not? I don't care, you know. I mean – it's, it's just the name of the conference. Hell, just throw them in there, you know? I mean, I'd love to see Florida State whoop off on Oklahoma and both Texas in the same year, you know what I mean? No, no oh, yeah. shot. But, but I get the thing you're saying about football-wise, Rhett. Like, Oklahoma's going to hold its own. Texas probably isn't at first. But the thing is, the day Texas walks into the SEC, they're the richest team there. They're the richest university there immediately. Like, yeah. it's not even close either. Like, they're point. far and away the richest team in America, and that brings value to your conference, even if they aren't as good on the on the football field as they theoretically should be with the resources, with the boosters, with the with the uh, players they have there in Texas. So, I don't know. It, it'll be interesting to see, but I think this is all headed by money. It's all going to eventually head to a super conference, like Palmer said. Um, yeah. That's just yeah, you're opinion. right. I didn't think about that at I- I've always wondered the last few years why, you know, why is Texas not the powerhouse in the state of Texas? But like you said, now, yeah, we we probably will see a big jump in Texas football and probably get back to the Texas football that everybody knows, you know. Yeah, definitely. You got anything else, Grayson? Um, I think that what you – jumping off of what Palmer said about super conferences, I think you could start to see because we're going from what we had with an amateur league with the NCAA and we can get the NIL if we want to with – Pairs now being played that being paid. Now we can have a like you take the Pac-12 and the like you take the Mountain West and all those power conferences. You get a Western conference, you get an Eastern conference, and really divide it like an NFL or an NBA, and really start to I guess dive away from the NCAA and what it's been. I think that it's a giant overcorrection. I think that Texas and Oklahoma going to the SEC is gonna probably result in the dismantling of the Big 12, but we'll see how that progresses. There's a lot of a lot of rumors flying around about teams jumping ship and about teams going from point A to point B. But I think right now we're just going to have to wait because obviously we're not going to see anything happen until 2025 when those deals expire. But it's four years. It's a long time for something big to happen. Yeah, I, I believe you're, you're referring to Kansas. Are you talking about Kansas mm-hmm. talking to the Big Ten? Yeah. I saw that too. That makes a lot of sense for the Big Ten. They're already a good basketball conference. Could you imagine yeah. that in Kansas too? I mean – yeah, that would pretty much be the end of the Big 12 because oh, Kansas yeah. is the breadwinner in, in basketball and Oklahoma is the breadwinner in, in football. And you lose both mm-hmm. of those, that's that's a killer. I've seen where uh, West Virginia is in talks with the Big 10 and the ACC because geography-wise, they're in the Big 12. They're all in, like, the middle of the West. And then you got West Virginia on the East Coast. They're, like, by, if you look at it on a map, they're by far the furthest team away from anybody. So I think they'll be a team to go somewhere else. I seen something today or, or listened to a podcast today where if you distribute the Big Ten or not the Big Ten, yeah, the the pack, the Big Twelve, I guess the Big Twelve, 
uh, amongst the other four Power Five conferences, you'll have exactly 16 teams in every conference and 17 in the Pac-12. But, I mean, I think that would be a pretty good way to get a playoff out of that or something. Yeah, I, I saw that too, that division between – yeah, and just have Power Four or something like that. I mean, yeah, that's a that's probably where it's headed in the end. Um, if it's not going to be like what Grayson was describing, East and West, um, you definitely see some some type of like conference realignment, something like that. Um, <clears throat> um, what do, let's talk a little about NIL because this thing's still relatively new, just starting July first, I believe. Um, players being able to capitalize on their on their name, image, and likeness. Um, that report came out about Bryce Young, um, Nick Saban saying that that Bryce Young's almost made seven figures uh which is kind of crazy but i mean and 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 if i'm being honest is that probably alabama boosters paying him to like say hey to their kids or something yeah probably but (laughs) i mean what are you gonna do uh what do do y'all think where do you think nil's headed uh i think the nil it's gonna be an interesting year it's always i think it's gonna be a guinea pig year you're gonna have players trying to balance it was always them balancing student being students and being athletes. And now they're going to have to be businessmen. How does that play out in a locker room? Do you have egos clash? Do you have players who aren't making as much off their likeness? They start to say something. Do we see scholarships being, I guess that new, the NCAA has a lot of opportunities, but they've also have a lot of missed opportunities. I feel like they could have really capitalized on finding clauses and rules to really keep, I guess, the control. Cause now it's going to become the players have all the power and it's not going to stop here. I think it's going to become an NCA Players Association and something like that where the players start to have more power like we're seeing in the professional leagues where it's being taken away from the owners and more going to the players. That Yeah, that's one thing I was worried about when I first saw the you know, name, image, and likeness thing. I was worried about players signing like a deal for way too long and, and being taken advantage of because they, they don't – some of them don't have agents. They're just talking to these companies individually representing themselves and you can easily see how a company could sign a guy up who has potential to, to be fruitful for that company for 10 plus years but that that guy could be more fruitful with his his time and efforts in other places down the road when he's an nfl star or something like that so that's one issue i could see a guy getting getting taken advantage of by signing up for an extended period of time that he probably shouldn't and he probably wouldn't with the adequate uh, representation but go ahead palmer um I got a very good source. I'm not going to say the quarterback, but that, that one of the qu- quarterbacks, that the top ones in the nation, are, already has an agent. And, and that's good. Like, yeah, and it's for I think that's how it should years. be. And it's for multiple years. And say this quarterback leads for the draft this year, and he signed a seven-year deal with his agent at, say, an X amount of dollars, but he becomes an all-pro a, a pro bowl type quarterback and then he's worth so much more money but he's still tied up in this contract from college that agent's getting a good deal on that guy on that guy see i i think agents are good for these guys agents are going to negotiate on behalf of these players not let them sign stupid deals with companies um because you see that with like scott boris and the mlb for example Rhett, you know this scott boris does not let his players sign a deal before they hit free agency he lets a free market determine what they're worth that's what I think is best for these guys. Let them, let them get to the NFL determine what they're worth. Don't determine what you're worth when you're a freshman in college and have no money, you know? Yeah. I just – I don't know. It's definitely going to help. It's going to be a guidance thing for them as, like, being young, you know, and not necessarily knowing what's the right move. But then again, I mean, I get, you know, paying them. But when I saw Bryce Young is almost making a million dollars in endorsement, I just thought – that's insane, man. And I've said it before, I'm going to say it again. It's going to become about me, when whoever it is. And I think we'll see that, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to hurt some teams, and then some teams are going to get by with it. But, I mean, I don't know. These guys are 18, 19, 20 years old, and you're paying them an insane amount of money. Like, who knows if this leads to, like, you know, guys getting in trouble or legal issues. I just – I don't know. We'll see how it goes, but – I'm not sold on the idea of it. I don't I don't really agree. I think it's great for the players. I mean, I'm all for the players. Like I as being there at one time, like you gotta be for the players. You can't be against the players in this situation. I mean, you can't expect someone to make a university millions and millions of dollars. Like, who do you think's building the new math buildings? It's not the <laughs> mathletes. 
It's okay. the it's a football team. You and these guys the they couldn't even sign an autograph for five bucks, Rhett. Like that's ridiculous. They should be able to make money off their names. And you're not seeing a ton of guys sign these huge deals. We don't even know Nick Saban could just be blowing smoke for recruits. I mean, Arch Manning, they're saying he's the greatest quarterback uh, prospect of all time coming out of high school. I mean, he may be trying to get that guy. I don't know. But I don't think you see a lot of these millions and millions of dollar deals right now. I think it's just more for people to make money off their brand. I mean, you see a lot of guys get these logos, and that's what they're making money off of. They're selling shirts. I mean, you should be able to make money like that. I mean, you don't hear like a millions of dollars deals. Not right now, at least. I think right now it's perfect. It's great for the players. It's great for the universities. Okay, well, what happens when Alabama continues to get some of the number one prospects out of high school and continue to dominate and Georgia never gets a chance because they're coughing up more money, more deals? I mean, I'm just saying, you know, like what – is one team going to control this with money? With how much – I mean, is that gonna- they, they would have controlled it anyway. They were getting number one recruits yeah, without getting, paying them. Yeah, obviously, well, Alabama – Without I'm, paying them. They were paying them, paying them but – Allegedly, them. allegedly. Allegedly, sorry. Don't want to accuse anybody. <laughs> but yeah. uh, I, I kind of agree with you, Rhett. I get what you're saying. Because you're going to see some of these schools with deeper pockets that weren't producing. You might see them start producing. I like yeah. think like the University of Maryland. They have some really big boosters at Maryland. But they yeah, just haven't been good at football. Mostly might go college football. Who knows? I mean, yeah, you could see schools with deeper pockets like Rutgers maybe. Rutgers has a ton of boosters, but they suck at football. So you yeah. could see a school like that start paying these kids to stay in the Northeast, and you never know. Auburn with Charles Barkley. See? Going to be, finally being able to be free with how he uh, supports Auburn, get those basketball and football players saying, hey, if you come over here, maybe I can uh, talk to some guys, get some sponsorship deals, maybe get you in a commercial. Tim maybe, Cook, CEO yeah. of Apple. He went to Auburn. I mean – Start, you can start to see it like yeah pros giving back like you could see johnny manzel potentially going back to texas a&m and be like hey let me use my brand as johnny football to get some players some five-star recruits saying hey this could be you or something i it's, it i think palmer's right the players are going to be inevitably supported on the end of this it's what they've been fighting for for so long and i think that let's see how this first year plays out and let's see how it's handled and let's see how the guinea pig process is eventually after the, I think football is still going to be entertaining. It's still going to be special. The players are now going to be fighting for sponsorship deals and advertisements. I think it's going to be really great for the competition and it should be really good for college football moving forward. I totally agree. Well, anybody got anything else before we move on? I'm good. good. All right. Sounds good. Let's move on to a little major league baseball. Let's talk about a trade that, uh, Happened a couple days ago. Um, Nelson Cruz is traded to the Tampa Bay Rays. That's a pretty big move for for a franchise that doesn't spend money that much, Rhett. They they're they're really stingy with their prospects, and now they they're trading for a a cleanup guy who's going to fill fill that DH hole for the for the Rays. Like uh, this this is a World Series contender again. Yeah, I I think it's a really good move. The Rays are fixing to they're they're wanting to make a run with it, and you just got an RBI guy who is hits more home runs the older he gets. Um, I see the Rays making a run and probably ended up winning the division. Um, Red Sox probably get a wild card and they'll beat the Yankees and that. But um, I really, I think it's a great move. Nelson Cruz is awesome and it's definitely going to help out the Rays this year. Do they have the pitching to go go anywhere though? I mean, I know their best guy towards are having Tommy John. Dude, yeah. The Rays have so many pitching prospects. It's absurd. Yeah. Yeah, it's bullpen, bro. They're that's bullpen. I mean, I knew they traded away Snell or Ben Snell or something last year. Yeah, Blake, uh, Blake Snell, yeah. And they got back a like a 20-year-old who throws like 103. So, yeah, that, I mean, they're restocking when they trade these guys away. Okay. All right. And they're little – I mean, they're going to be good. Like, they – you know, you just you just picked up a huge – but, like, the main thing last year – the, their bullpen kept them in it. I mean, the only thing maybe they were lacking was maybe some more runs on the board, and uh, Nelson Cruz definitely going to contribute to that. So, how about uh, you see Rich Hill though? Yeah, um, Rich Hill to the Mets. That's another. Oh, that's another pickup. Eat innings eater until you get Syndergaard and Degrom back. 
for good. Yeah, I like it, right? I don't like that one, but I like that. I like that one. And then today, Adam Frazier. Um, he's the, he has the most hits in the major leagues, right, Rhett? He's Huge, going yeah. to San Diego where they have 85 position players, and I don't know where they're going to play. So. Where is he going to play? Cronenworth. Yeah, they have Cronenworth. He's like one of the best second base players yeah. in baseball. They'll put him in the outfield. I Do think. They'll put him in the outfield. Yeah, I mean, I mean their outfield's not bad either, though. I mean, I don't know. Who do you take? I mean, Tommy, Pam, you, or Yeah, Pam, I guess you, guess you take Pam. Pam. You're not taking Grisham out. Yeah, I saw somebody said uh, move Cronenworth to first and uh, buy Hosmer. No, <laughs> I would not send you're Hosmer. You're paying Hosmer like $25 million. You're not, you're not taking Hosmer, yeah. in my opinion. And but I'm be honest, I mean, yeah, that's, I think it's good, but I, I, don't see it, I don't see that helping a whole lot. I mean, he's that good. Does that help the Mets win the NL East? Because that division's kind of wacky with the Phillies and the – it feels I like think, it's kind of it, – it, it reminds me of the NFC East, not to, like, compare it to football, but it feels so out of place from, like, you see the Dodgers 60 wins, 60 – the Giants with 61 wins, Red Sox with 60 wins, the Rays with 60 wins, and you got the Mets who had to – they're a little behind because of COVID, or if that's – I maybe could be wrong on that, but it feels a little wacky. Could you all guys elaborate on that just to help get me more invested in baseball? Yeah, right now the Phillies suck at pitching. That's their issue. They score so many runs. It's crazy, but they can't pitch. And, it, and their bullpen's not great either. That's what killed them last year. With the Braves, it's injuries. I mean, we don't have our two best pitchers right now. We don't have our best player, the top five player in the game right now. Um, so, I, and our catcher's out right now, our four-hole hitter. So, and our, our, our corner outfielder doesn't know how to keep his hands off his wife. So, there's another reason why we don't have another player. So Alex, our best three pitchers are hurt. You forgot. Literally. Yeah. I forgot. Enoa. Enoa, or yeah. Enoa, sorry. I had to punch a wall one day. Yeah. Well, so like, we're just down like, bad right now. Like you said, though, with the Phillies, as bad as their pitching is, the Braves are still in this, but they have to make a move, dude. Like right now they got, I really think they should go talk with the Cubs. And if you got a Chris Bryant throw in the outfield, that sucker will be your star. And that's, I mean, you're missing a star. Replace it with another star, you know, and I don't know if they could afford that, but him or, like you said, the bullpen, Craig Kimball's available. I mean, bring him back to Atlanta, you know. We definitely could. We can't afford both. We might could afford one, and that's a stretch. Yeah. I mean, if the Cubs eat, eat the money, then, yeah, we. I'd throw Pache. I'd throw uh, Waters. I'd maybe throw – uh, Yeah, if they want Dansby, they ain't happen. He has, like, <laughs> the highest strikeout rate in history right now. It's crazy. But – yeah. They could afford Chris Bryant. I mean, Chris Bryant would be – I don't. I think Craig Kimball's going to go for more because right now he's the best player. Yeah, here. speaking of Kimball, let's get into the bullpen arms. I mean, the, the bullpen arms are going to get a lot of prospects this offseason – or this uh, – this the end of this season heading towards a trade deadline because mm -hmm. there's not many teams selling, Rhett, and there's not that many – there's not that many relievers out there. I, there ain't – and now, like, sort of bringing into, like, relievers, though um, – do the Dodgers look for a reliever with what's going on? Yeah. I mean, yeah, actually, Kenley Jansen sucks. Yeah, they have to, well, right? I don't know, though. Like, my thing is this. I mean, I watched the game, and they boo Kenley Jansen two nights in a row. But the guy before the last past weekend, he has been the best closer this year other than Kimbrell. And I don't – Lanson. Think, honestly, like, not coming from – like, I'm not against the Dodgers in this. I'm saying I don't think – they need to. I would have faith in Kenley Jan. It's Kenley Jansen. Even if you I, gotta maybe you think about switching Kenley to eighth to the eighth inning and put Trinan. That's exactly. I was about to say that. Why is Blake Trinan not closing the game? That is their best pitcher right I now. I agree. And and um, they have a guy Bickford. He's um a young guy. He's their kind of eight eighth inning guy. I mean, throws gas and a nasty slider. He's been performing right now. You could even throw him in the closer role, but. I don't think they need to worry about that right now. Like, I don't, I don't think they're going to go for a closer. It's like they said the other day, closers always go through this. You're three days during the year, you're three outings, you don't do good, and Kenley Jansen's not going to continue like this the rest of the year. So That's a pretty level-headed approach. But we know how Dodger fans, they can get all riled up and exactly. go for heads. So. I don't know. We'll see. Um, I'm, I'm for sure there's going to be a ton of relievers on the move in these next coming days heading up to the trade deadline. Um, let's talk about Buxton. Um, 
He's so uh, the rumor like a couple weeks ago was if they're they're searching for an extension. If the extension doesn't come, he's gone. Like he, he's getting traded. And today, Ken Rosenthal tweets out they don't they're not agree, agreeing to an extension, which pretty much means Buxton's out the door. So uh, one of the one of the better outfitters this season for the limited time he's played is on the market. Um, and this is going to be a big deal for one team down the stretch. Yeah, and I'd like to see him go at the deadline, but I don't know. I mean, I hope somebody would say – I mean, I know he's been injured on and off, but I would definitely sign him if I was, you know, Giants fan. I'm saying, yeah, sign him. But, yeah, they offered like seven years, $80 million, and that's that's good, but I think he's worth more. I know he's been hurt, but – the way he came out this year, that guy's fixing to be one of the top players in the MLB. He was looking at a two hundred million dollar contract the way yeah. he was playing. Like that's that's the level he was playing at. Um, and I think someone's going to give up some good prospects to get him too, especially if they throw in Barrios with him. You're yeah. looking at a haul back coming back, like crazy haul. Yeah. And it's like because the Twins aren't, they're not within a few years, I don't think yet, to win it. So they might as well start looking for some good prospects and build up from there. So I would. I'd hope they deal him at the deadline, but we'll see. Yeah. Um, anything else you want to talk about, Rhett? Scherzer? Uh, one know? more thing, Scherzer, yeah. Apparently, from rumors today in the last couple of days, Scherzer is now a lot more likely to get traded because the Nationals was falling out six games. And I, I'm telling you, I'm not being biased, but watch out. The Giants may get him. I'm not even playing. Brett, do you know how his contract structured though? It's really bad. Do what? The deferred money. I don't. Well, actually, I don't know. Would if you, if the if a team trades for him, do they pick up that deferred money, or would the Nats still pay that? Because he has eight years left at the end of this deal. He's paid ten million a year for eight years of deferred money. I think the Nats still pay him, which is what I'm worried about that they won't deal him. But I really think you got to deal him right here for a chance. Uh, yeah. For great prospects, for Max Scherzer, anybody would take him right now that has a lead, you know, uh, going into the postseason. You're getting a, an Aroldis Chapman haul for him. Like, you're getting, yeah. like, crazy amounts of prospects. Like A, a dog in the playoffs, too. Huh. Yeah. This guy knows how to win. So, I'd love to see him go somewhere, but, you know, we'll see in the next few days. So. Yep. Um. I guess that's all the baseball we got. You got anything else, Rep? Um, just, you know, Giants, three out of four against the Dodgers this weekend. <laughs> Please, somebody, you know, can we say they're good yet or no? Is it still a hot streak? You're all right. You probably end up in the wild card. <laughs> you're right. I mean, you're right, yeah. We'll see this week. You know, we got Dodgers and then Houston coming in. So, we'll see how that yeah, goes. that's a big week. Yeah. But, uh, anyway, I think that's it for baseball. All right. Palmer. Here we go. Here's your favorite team, the Green Bay Packers. Uh-oh. Dude, let's go. Yeah, give, I mean, give it to them real to... quick, Palmer. Huh? So give it to them. We only have to deal with that one more year. As a Chicago Bears fan, I'm as a Chicago Bears fan, I am pumped. I'm oh. tired. I am sick and tired of the Packers road raiding us <laughs> every single time we play them for my entire life, I feel like. Oh gosh. We got one more year. I mean, they're going to probably win the two. But that's just one more year of that. I've dealt with it for 22 years. It's only one more year of that. Rodgers is going to sell off into Cabo retirement. Devontae Adams is going to sign some stupid deal worth way more money than anyone should, on any human should ever have. And the Bears are going to be good because Justin Fields is going to be the best quarterback in the league. <laughs> As simple as that. And hey, that was, Yeah, that was total facts. You didn't exaggerate anything right there. <laughs> Listen, I think he might get lucky. Rogers might retire next week. I saw a bunch of reports. I was, uh, as I usually, I get like bored and I start like looking at articles, start looking up Aaron Rodgers, seeing if he gets traded or dealt somewhere. This Matt, it's been like a summer of, it's like a drama show. It's something that you'd find off of like in TV. Aaron Rodgers is always complaining or he's on Jeopardy. I saw it says, so are you no, time out? I'm are not, you, a, are I'm you not a, against Aaron Rodgers? Am I against it? Yeah, are you against Aaron Rodgers in this situation? Are you with the front office? I'm, I'm in the fence. I'm on the fence. Oh, I, I oh I, man. I, this is never. gross malpractice by the Whoa. Green Bay Packers. Come on. <laughs> never. Are you kidding me? Josh Allen. He's had one year of goodness. 
Aaron Rodgers has had 48, it feels like, for me, of being great. And they don't let him know when he can go use the bathroom. They don't <laughs> let Josh <laughs> Allen. Him the big one. Dude, who cares? He's the greatest quarter. He's a top five quarterback of all time. Top five. All right, Grayson, give your, give your take. Give, I, us, give us your reasoning. So, I've been back and forth on it. I, I want to be I want to be on Palmer's camp, support the players. I want – but I feel like Aaron Rodgers, and it's been like this cycle for a long time. Aaron Rodgers has a history of deal, being tough to deal with. He got – there's reports when Mike McCarthy was still the coach of the Packers that when he'd call a play, he'd roll his eyes and change the play. Some of that – some of that stuff just doesn't apply with me. I'd and do that if McCarthy was my coach too. It's true, I, especially oh. about how that season went. But uh, I think that – Aaron Rodgers, I think that ship is sailed with Green Bay. I think he and the front office management, no matter what the si- what sides of the story you want to like go with, I think that it's the relationship's too strained. I think that he's probably on his way out. I think he's enjoyed this off season of just not doing anything and being like, hey, I could I could take a year off and just pull a Brett Favre. I this I'm all, I hate to like just throw out a a take like that, but it's just so it feels so parallel to me. Like Aaron Rodgers replaces Brett Favre. And now he's basically doing the same thing where he's going to retire. And I think he's going to take a year off and then he's probably going to come back to a team that desperately needs him. And I think he could still play good football. Easy. Yeah. The, can we at least agree that it was a bad move to not let him know you're drafting a quarterback? Oh, I think that Jordan Love move was, oh, it was very bad miscalculation. They, they traded up too. That's they traded crazy. Up to draft That's, a that, quarterback. That, was, that is crazy. Especially if we, Especially when you're one game away from the Super Bowl and you draft a QB in the first round, Crazy. it didn't look like anybody was going to trade up for him. I feel like they could have drafted a receiver there. They could have been a little more aggressive, especially in this year's draft when it was very public that Aaron Rodgers wasn't happy. I think they definitely could have made some moves to maybe try to trade for Julio Jones, maybe try to sign another receiver in the market, get a guy like Kendrick Bourne, who's a good slot receiver. New England was able to pick him up. I think they could have done a lot of things, but I think Aaron Rodgers could have also probably handled a little better. I, I'm not a guy that likes to see his quarterback making public news with all this stuff, but I get he's this very decorated quarterback, very talented quarterback that you should treat like royalty. But at the same time, I feel like it goes both ways. Yeah, uh, I, I can agree with that. Paul, you're about to have think- – the Bears I'm, are about to be free from Aaron Rodgers. You should be shaking your head yes. He should be happy, yeah. You should be hoping yeah, Green Bay treats I, him like oh. crap. He's just hoping Justin Fields doesn't suck. <laughs> Justin Fields is a good guy, all right? He's not going to suck. He's a good guy. I don't know if he's yeah. going to be good in the NFL. Like the beast, bro. Don't play with Justin I, Fields. I, I, dude, I'll Palmer can down. vouch for me. He was sitting on. He was sitting by me on the couch watching the Falcons pick Kyle Pitts and me screaming no. I was like, please, Justin Fields, Justin Fields, Justin Fields, and it didn't happen. So, uh, uh, yeah, it was tough, but no, I will I'm a like, Justin Fields guy. 99% of the times always be on the player side, unless they do something stupid. Like, I'm even on Richard Sherman's side. Like, whoa. Bro, Unfortunate situation. Don't what, him. We don't know what he was going through. He could have oh, been. Going we know he was going through some bad stuff. Oh, but, go on. Yeah. You can't act like But that. I mean, I'm not like against the guy. I'm not like yeah, get him out of the league, going. get him out of. Right. Get him out of the public eye. Get him some help and get him back on the field. Let the bear sign him. I want that type <laughs> of defense on my defense. Come on now. Oh my gosh. Yeah, maybe he could break the door down for y'all winning the division. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Sorry. Oh, this, I had we to do we that. have fun here. We have fun. Sorry. Here. Sorry, I had to do that. Um, but all right, I think we've hammered home Aaron Rodgers. Um <laughs> So this vaccination vaccination issue is is really taking off right now. Oh, this should I be mean, good. DeAndre Hopkins is basically saying, uh, "I'm going to quit if you make me get this." And <laughs> listen, so listen, per what, source, per there, source. There, there is a lot of guys that are like DeAndre Hopkins. Oh, I don't, I don't blame that. I don't <laughs> think that Twitter? that's far from a. I'm not an anti-vax person. Like, if you want the vaccine, get it. I don't have the vaccine just because I don't feel like I need it. But if you feel like you need it, go ahead. I don't care. That's your choice. This is my choice. But I feel like there's a lot of guys that are like elite level, pro bowl, pro bowl level guys that you can't cut. Like, I mean, they can do a lot of dumb things before you cut them. And them not wanting to get a needle in the arm is not a good reason to cut them. Yeah. And I feel like a lot of them are going to come out. They're going to stand up against it. And I don't know if the NFL is going to budge because they're really, really for this. Yeah. But – I feel like you're going to have a lot of those Pro Bowl elite-level guys 
make the stand. But then you have – they may be starters or they may be special team role players. Those guys that are against the vaccine, when they find out, oh, if I don't get this needle in my arm, they're going to dr- – they're going to bring in an unrestricted free agent that who is vaccinated and who can play special teams to take me over. And they're going to be like, Oh, let me get this vaccine real quick. So I'm not on that. I'm not that guy that gets cut for not being vaccinated. It's almost like the ultimatum. It's got, they're not forcing them to get the vaccination, but they're kind of making it very, very difficult for them to, because let's say somebody has a COVID outbreak and they're not vaccinated. They have to forfeit the game. The players on both teams don't get paid. I think that last part probably really rubs some people the wrong way just because especially those fringe players that aren't making $20 million a year, they're probably making the veterans minimum salary. And I think it's going to be interesting to see how it plays out, not just from the off season and training camp, but moving forward with, I guess, locker room talk. Like, I guess I've always, I keep going back to the locker room, but how is it going to go with, let's say someone does have to forfeit and they're in a, like a playoff spot. Let's say that the, uh, the 49ers make an excellent run this year. They're 13 and three going into that last game for that number one seed. And then let's say Jimmy Garoppolo didn't get the vaccine and he gets COVID and there's a massive outbreak and they have to forfeit. They lose out on home field advantage. How does that play out in the locker room? How does that play out in free agency? Some things that I really want to see moving forward. Yeah, this is this is the NFL got as close as you could get without forcing someone to do something. Right. Like, I mean, it is the the wording in this is strong. The 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 punishment is strong. Um, I I don't know how I feel. I like I, it's fine. Like I I I get that they're encouraging people to get vaccinated. That's totally cool. Um, and I think once this thing gets FDA approved, I think it's going to be mandated by the NFL, in my opinion. Because yeah. I think the thing is that they can't mandate it because it's not FDA approved. Like, you right. can't just force someone to do that. But um, I think they're doing as much as they can without that to, to pretty much force people to do it. But, yeah, like you, what you're talking about, the locker room dynamics are crazy here. Mm-hmm. Like, if people aren't getting paid because of – and you're forfeiting a game because of a COVID outbreak – if you're not, if people aren't getting their bread, they're going to be really upset with somebody and that's going to cause some, some fractured relationships. Like think about, I think about the Rudy Gobert, Donovan Mitchell thing. That was like, yeah. people were like, one of them's getting traded. Like that was a big deal back in that, back when COVID first happened. Like that was a fractured relationship, but they fixed it obviously. But yeah, you saw on Twitter too, Cole Beasley, who's been, I guess for a long time this summer and part of the spring has been really against getting the vaccine. He says that it's not, it's his choice, but and then he got into a Twitter fight with one of his uh, teammates, Jerry Hughes, and he said that I respect your opinion, but let's say that somebody doesn't really like it ruffles them the wrong way. They're like, you need to get this vaccine because you're costing us. Like, let's say Brady has a receiver, on, like let's say Antonio Brown doesn't want to get the vaccine, and it, Brady's obviously going to be a guy that's going to get in your face and say, hey, you need to do this for the championship. You need to do this for the team. Why isn't this happening? It causes a big rift. I think the NFL is trying to do everything they can to save their business because they had to do so many reschedulings of games and that really is going to impact their profit. And that's probably what they're thinking about, especially after 2020, they probably lost a lot of money. They're trying to do everything they can to get back on track. Yeah. I think the big thing, like I, why I think the players, like if I was a player, I would definitely be getting it because you only get tested once every two weeks. Mm-hmm. And and if you don't get it, you're getting tested every day. Ugh. Even if you do get COVID, like they're not going to know if you're vaccinated. They're not going to test you for two weeks. You could get it and fight it off before they test you again. Like, I mean, it, I, it's crazy, but I, I think it's – if I was an NFL player, I definitely would definitely lean towards it. I heard old man Tom is a uh, anti-vax. I could is see he? it. I 100% could it pro- see it. It probably messes with the TB12 method, to be honest. That's that's what I'm saying. There's a lot of these guys who, like, seriously, they value their bodies. They treat their bodies like temples because their body, let's be real, that's what gets them paid all this money. Yeah. And they're like, I don't know what this, this vaccine is going to do to my body in three years. Like, they don't know, and that's what they're saying. That's a lot of they're saying, I don't know if this is going to hinder my playing career, and I don't want it to – I don't want to take the risk. Right. It's such a controversial topic, too, and it's – it's so it's so polar. Like you're you either one way or the other, and I think with um, the vaccine especially, we've it's going to be based on like I think the NFL's got to do a good job making sure they have all the information, have all the facts. I think that the players need to. I th- I hate that it's become such a pressure situation, but 
I think if it had been more gradual, it probably would have been a smoother process. I think as training camp goes on, we'll see more people getting vaccinated just because they need to be able to want to be, they don't want to be that guy because it could be 99% vaccination rates on the team. And then there's that one guy and it's just like that pressure thing that ends up becoming the hundred percent. Rhett, what do you think about this vaccine situation? I mean, I don't want to get political or anything, but like, you know, I think this this isn't like a political conversation. Like there's Republicans saying, oh, if I get this thing, I'll be microchipped and I'll be dead in a week. But there's Democrats saying, I don't know. I don't, I don't trust this either. There's not a lot, there's not enough science behind it for me. So, I mean, I don't really think it's political. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I, I don't think they should be forced to do it. I mean, I think they should have a choice because it's their job. It's not just what they do for fun. It's like, you're saying, Hey, if you don't do this, you're not, you know, you're not going to get to do, you're not going to play. And I don't, I don't like it. I mean, but I think they'll end up, like you said, they're, they'll give in. I mean, they're going to, if, if they, if they mandate it, I mean, you're going to do it to play. Yeah. You're gonna, and so I don't know. We'll see how it plays out, but I'm not a huge fan of it. All right. Well, I don't really care either way. Go ahead. To see how it plays out. Yeah. It will be interesting for sure to see how this plays out. Um, It'd be an interesting uh, situation, especially with training camp coming up. We'll uh, obviously talk about it more when, when once we get to training camp season. Um, but for now, we'll leave it at that. Um, so let's talk about Deshaun Watson. Um, obviously, he's mired in tons of crap right now. Um, yeah. He still has however many accusers. Um, he, he shows up for training camp, though, still says he wants to be traded. So... This obviously probably isn't going to happen this year just because of draft pick wise. You don't know where the teams are going to be picking yet. So it'll probably occur after the season if it happens now. So definitely be a touch and go when it comes to that. Um, where, where do you see Deshaun Watson in his next three years probably? Um, I I think first of all, he showed up to training camp to a, it was the classic Marshawn Lynch. I'm just here so I don't get fined type thing because I think it's a $50,000 fine per day that you miss training camp. Yeah. So that I, it's just, it's just there as a formality. I think Watson in terms of teams, I think he first has to get his legal situation set out. I think he would have been traded if not for the, the madness that ensued in April and March when he got absolutely hammered in legal issues, but we'll leave that for the, the other stuff. But I think the Sean Watson will be best fit. I always thought Denver was a great fit for Deshaun. I think Denver has enough pieces to be willing to give, especially Houston, a team that's not really going to be one of the top teams in the league. I think you could send an old age. This, the, hear me out. You could send Von Miller, a guy who's coming off an injury, a significant injury, and you could send maybe a first-round pick for Deshaun Watson, a quarterback, because Denver's always been a team in my mind. Great defense. Play, I have a playoff roster, but they don't have a playoff QB. because you Whoa, 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 whoa. I think it's going to take like 20 times more than that. 20 times. I, it's just like something I'd throw around. You're saying like baseline? Yeah, basically. Are you saying after this year? Is that what happened? I think Von, we, we should wait. I think Von Miller's a free agent, but if say they do like a sign and trade type thing, I don't know if they do that not in the NBA, but anyways. Um, I definitely like Denver, though. I really like Denver a lot as a spot for Deshaun Watson. Um, if Drew Locke struggles this year a lot, yeah, that's definitely a given because if Drew Locke comes out and has, he has all the talent in the world to, to be whatever he wants. So if Drew Locke struggles, though, this – Opens the door. Aaron Rodgers, Deshaun Watson, one way ticket to Denver. One of them for sure. Oh yeah. Drew, Drew Locke's gonna have a breakout year. He's got Cortland Sutton. Oh, yeah. we, got- by the way, Grayson Palmer's the biggest Drew Locke fan on this planet. Oh, so that probably that probably uh, hit you the wrong way. I'm I'm real sorry, bud. Oh, he's like bought in. Like he's got a jersey, probably. Oh no, oh, no, <laughs> yeah. we, we're not jersey. No, I can't say that on podcast. Never mind. We don't we don't buy jerseys over here. I don't think. Um, but no, seriously, Drew Locke. I mean, he's got. He's got weapons. He's got Noah Fant, Cortland Sutton, um, n- another guy. He wears like number fourteen or something. Jerry Judy. Oh, he's Jerry got Judy's that guy. guy. And he's got one more. I mean, uh, KJ Hamler. Yeah, something like that. Um, but he's destined for all greatness. He's going to be all pro this year. Probably second team all NFL. Oh my I'm telling gosh. You, just wait on it. Does no, he get Justin he- Fields spot according to you? <laughs> Do well. Oh, well, Justin Fields is going to win MVP. So. Oh, okay. Yeah, there we just go. Just wanted to make sure that it was still there. Oh, nice. that's great. So he's he's leaving uh, Patrick Mahomes, uh, Tom yeah, Brady, yeah. Tom Josh Brady. Allen off the all. all Brady's the goat. 
won't say it. No, yeah, whatever you say, Red. He's you know, Tom Brady is system definitely- quarterback. That that's another thing, Grayson. We're we're anti Tom Brady here. Besides oh. Red, yeah. All right, totally. I guess Red and I, besides the Florida State Clemson thing, got something to agree on. Yeah, yeah. Y'all got that for sure. Me and Palmer. Me and Palmer. We could do a whole podcast on that, to be honest with you. We We definitely could. We could talk for an hour about that. Dude has a noodle arm. Oh, Lord. Let's not get started. (laughs) We'll be here for like three hours. Um, But anyways, um, you call in your shot, Deshaun to Denver? That would be my pick right now. But I think that as the season plays out, we might see a potential. Let's see how New Orleans plays out this year with Jameis Winston. Let's see how. um, Whoa. Oh. Jameis Winston's got a cannon right here. I think if Jameis Winston, if he cuts down the turnovers even to just 15 picks, the Saints would be a playoff team. He's got that, he's got enough talent. He's got a decent enough arm. It's just that I think sometimes he's erratic with the ball, doesn't make great decisions sometimes. It was, it was like that with Tampa Bay. They went seven and nine with this talented playoff roster. It was just Jameis, Jameis Winston could not take care of the football. The next year they bring in Tom Brady and they win the Super Bowl. Well, uh, well, I yeah. think he's matured. I think we're gonna see that this year. I think we're gonna see a big comeback year with Jameis Winston this year. Ooh. I'm not, you know, I'm not gonna hate on, not, you know, not just saying that as a, you know, Florida State fan, but I'm just saying, I think, I mean, I hope so. I'd like to see him perform. We know how good he can perform. He just needs to smarten up a little bit, you know? right? So yeah, I think be- Sean Payton's gonna help with that. Yeah. Oh. Um. He he fixed Drew Brees. If you remember, Drew Brees in in San Diego was not great. I mean, they they traded him for pennies on the dollar to New Orleans, and Sean Payton worked his magic, and now Drew Brees is going to be a Hall of Famer. I like that. I like that. But is one is Jameis? Is he a lock for the starting quarterback job? I mean, Sean I don't know Payton, Taysom. They say Taysom, yeah, but I think they want to use him Taysom Hill. He really does. It's kind of scary. <laughs> it's kind of weird. Like, I mean, he's not that great of a athlete. I mean, whoa, what? Not that great of a quarterback. He is an outstanding is, athlete. He is a great – but comparatively, I feel like you can find guys that, that can do his job. They just can't throw the ball as well. I disagree. You can't I find quarterbacks. You can't – I know, I do too. I really agree. But you can't find quarterbacks that does what Taysom Hill does. But I guarantee you Travis Etienne and yeah. multiple other running backs in the league can do what Taysom Hill does. But I think Taysom, what Taysom Hill does is incredible because he's a quarterback. Yeah, he's like that athlete that's registered from high school five stars. Yeah. Oh yeah. What about the Michael Thomas? Uh, yeah. He's gonna be out yeah, for like that sucks. Six or seven weeks into the season, I believe, yeah, at a minimum. That sucks. Yeah. I can't stay healthy. It's tough, especially the Saints have signed that that long tier long term deal, and he's. It's been kind of a up and down. It's it. Ugh. Yeah. Slant boy. Definitely looking. <laughs> yeah. Definitely looking tough for Slant boy. Up, up for um, Slam Boy. I'm sure the, the meme people are loving that. Oh, they're going wild right now. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, I, mean, I, was here, I listened to Rap Sheet say something about it today. And he said what he had heard was right after the season that Slam Boy was going to get, like, scope of his ankle. And that's all it was going to be. It was just going to be a clean out of the ankle. He'll be back in, like, a month or so. But then he said this surgery happened in June. And it was like a, I don't remember how long the recovery is. And like his earliest return is like six or seven weeks into the oh, season. Geez. So, it, but if he never had that scope and then this scope is what they did in June, then I think the Saints have like something to seriously be worried about. Like, why didn't he get this surgery right after the True. season? But it could also be them going back into the ankle and having another surgery. Maybe. But I don't know. I think it does stink for the Saints. Now Jameis or Taysom don't really have any weapons besides Alvin Kamara. Yeah. Now now the now they'll just be the only wild card in the NFC South after the Falcons win the division. So that sucks. But totally kidding. Tank season. <laughs> tank season. Spencer Rattler, Sam Howell, please. Um sorry, not get off on the Falcons again, but um I guess that's all the NFL we got. Um, unless somebody else has got a little, little, little nugget they want to bring. Anybody? I'm, I don't think so. I got all I wanted to talk about there. All right, let's let's talk a little Olympic basketball. It's like <laughs> these guys. Wait, the the USA legitimately has the top. They have okay. I'll say this: they have 19 out of the top 20 players in the world. Giannis obviously being the exclusion there. Um, 
and these guys get to get to Japan and they forget how to play basketball. What are we doing? You cannot just slander Luca Luca like that. My bad. I completely forgot about Luca. Okay, eighteen out of twenty. Well, what about what about Jokic? Okay, seventeen out of twenty. The, the, the foreign, the, the foreign. Dude, NBA it doesn't ma- it doesn't make any difference. These guys are all playing for different teams. The seventeen out of twenty are playing for the same team. Yeah, it's a lot of selfish basketball. Honestly, they're playing ISO ball. They're playing street ball. What I think happens, I don't think I don't think they train for the Olympics. I think they just after the season they just took off. Which and I, you got to think though, because the players were already getting hurt from the long season because the short break got COVID, and now they're going like even longer playing like. The guys are probably exhausted. They're playing in a different time zone. Um, well, if you're exhausted, don't play for America's team. I mean, we're trying to win here, and they're out there. You, know? you want to throw out some high schoolers? Uh, somebody that'll do the job. Let's they're get Bronny there. James out there. Yeah, I mean, yeah. they're playing around. We're not winning ball games, and honestly, it's it, it hurts. I mean, we're not the top country right now, and it's sad. You know. Yeah, I saw that final score to France this morning. I was like. Ooh. Yeah, I think we, their best player is Evan Fournier, who comes off the bench for the Celtics. <laughs> yeah, Evan Fournier was freaking ball, and he dropped twenty eight on our heads. Yeah. Like, what are we doing? I think but, that a team USA, it's that it's not that we're so bad. I think that these guys, these international teams, have played together. They're used to playing that because they come. It's not like where they have a. I mean, they have their pro leagues and stuff like that, but their main thing is these these Olympics and the USA. We're all so used to. Playing that ISO ball, like Palmer said, like I guess you coined it like the selfish basketball. I also think that they're calling it different because all the games that I've seen and watched, they're always they get like what they think is a foul and they look over to the ref and they're like, dude, what the heck? They're not calling some of these fouls that they give the NBA because there's not it's not the superstar treatment that we're used to because the NBA, it's like a whistle every five seconds. I hate to complain like that, but it's just about to speak my mind. Yeah, I agree, totally agree. But kind of going back to what you said, I like what you said about the pride. They play for pride. Because I remember talking back to, to Tommy Powell, who was in an episode uh, a couple couple weeks ago. And he, he was, we were talking about the World Cup and because Euro, the Euro was going on. And we were talking about the World Cup and why, why all these players. Like, you see Ronaldo, Messi, Neymar, uh, Paul Pogba, uh, Mbappe, all these guys, they drop, it, they drop on the hat to go play for their national team. And that just doesn't happen in the U.S. We care more about the club side. Like, we care more about the NBA, NFL, MLB than we do about anything in the world sphere, you know? And in these other countries, like, like they do anything to put on for their country, you know? I also think Greg Popovich is a horrible coach. I, I think he's not great for what we're trying to do. Because the Spurs, the Spurs style of play is not what – 14 NBA All-Stars need to be doing. I think you could bring in a coach probably like uh, – I'm trying to think of like a young, bright – maybe bring Tyron in like – Yeah. Like, heck no. I, I bring in like the Hawks coach, like try to bring in somebody who's go. on like a hot streak. Dylan. Yeah. yeah there, there's a name. That was coming to me. Bring in something like, like maybe Rick Carlisle maybe, somebody that's maybe – I don't know. It's probably if it just seems I'll, really – I'll like, tell you who would be perfect. Steve Nash. I'll tell you why. He's really? been working with – he's worked with three All-NBA players this year. He's having to work with that dichotomy. And I think he, he's already been able to work with these guys who have huge egos, and now it's just adding a couple more in there. Yeah. So, I think he'd be great, even though he's not even American now that I'm thinking about it. So, that wouldn't work. You're having to tell, like, Damian Lillard, <laughs> hey, you're only taking five shots this game. And where – when he's on the Blazers, he's taking for, like, 20, 22 shots a game being the hero. And now it's like, hey, you got – five other guys who want to be the hero. So you got to have to take a step back. It's tough to tell these guys that. And international, it's like swallow their pride so easily, go play for their country. The USA, we're so used to dominating basketball, the Team USA stuff. Ever since Michael Jordan formed the dream team, it's kind of been like the USA gets the gold and we ask questions later. I think the rest of the countries have finally caught up to the United States in terms of not talent, but I guess terms of playing basketball. Yeah, I, but I think with all this being said, I think we still win. I do too. There's just yeah. too much. There's too much. Eventually, we'll figure it out. Exactly. They have to. This many all stars on the team. KD, KD's not gonna let this happen. Like, they, I, I did. Yeah. If it was like they were slandering the whole team, like, okay, I could see it. But they went for KD's head, and he don't like that. Oh no. He's about to. He's we'll about tweet to drop them. No, yeah, I think he's gonna. He's gonna create a burner. And then, and then they're going to go at Damian Lillard. He's going to drop 60. 
And then Devin Booker's going to drop 50. I mean, Devin Booker's in the U.S. You're thinking of Bradley Beal. But Booker, Booker and uh, Middleton and them came to the yeah. came to Tokyo last night. Yeah, they, they did. I thought it was Drew and Middleton. No, yeah, Booker it's rode Drew. on that plane ride with them. That's tough. Oh, okay. It's Drew, Middleton, and Booker. Yeah. yeah. Jeez, dude. I mean, that's that's some defense too with uh, Drew Holiday. Yeah. Yeah. Some of them poor guys will not know what hit them. <laughs> yeah, he'd have them dudes in a box. He's gonna lock them up. <laughs> Drew Holiday, I think, dropped 18 points. He was their leading score today. Drew, Drew Holiday was balling. Yeah, they're the right Drew, Drew Holiday's drive. made for that. Drew Holiday's made for I'm gonna yeah. hit you in the mouth and not get a foul call. Yeah, they need PJ Tucker just to like sit there and play defense <laughs> yeah. and then stand yeah. in the corner. Just send PJ Tucker and Bobby Portis out there. Let's see what happens. Like Bobby Portis yeah. on Team USA. Red, did you see it? your greatest of all time is playing for Team USA now, Devin Booker? Yeah, because he's a goat. Why wouldn't he play for Team USA? <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a that's one of Rat's best ones. Okay. Devin Booker, the goat. Yeah. He is, he is. We saw it. I mean, I know he didn't win it this year, but we saw it. We saw it. <laughs> All right. Um, any more thoughts about Team USA? I still, I'm still calling my shot. We're winning gold. gold. Yeah, I agree. I think we'll win it all. Glad we can agree. Um, now we got, we got. Okay, so NBA drafts coming up. Uh, 2021 NBA draft is coming on Thursday night. Um, obviously headliners, you got Kate Cunningham, Jalen Green, Evan Mobley, Jalen Suggs, probably gonna be top four picks, but as a little exercise, you know, to get ready for the NBA draft, we're going to do a little, a little redraft from the, from one of the most stacked drafts in recent memories, which is the 2018 NBA draft. Um, so I guess we're going to just do, we're going to do a little, little four man or three man, Rhett, you in or out? Yeah, y'all go ahead. Y'all go ahead. Y'all got this one. All right, we'll do. We'll do a little th- three man NBA draft. Uh, we'll let we'll let Grayson go first. This is his first. I feel like that'd here. be the. I feel like I get the easiest pick then. Yeah, for real. Yeah, you get you get the honors. You, you're right. going first. Palmer second. I'll go third, and then we'll just same order all the way. With the first pick in the 2021 Down and Out Sports Mammoth Plan Podcast mock draft, Team Grayson selects Luka Doncic for the Phoenix Suns. The nice pick there. Can't I mean, argue I don't. It. If you if you would have picked anyone else, I think we would have had to kick you out. I think there. I think this podcast would have been erupted into like just a madness. Yeah, it would have no been doubt. No doubt. Um, Alex, you can go next. You can pick your boyfriend. You want me to go next? All right, Sacramento Kings. But sh- are we, okay, I got a question before we do this. Are we gonna take? Are we gonna pick players based on what this team needed at the time? No, or just, are we just gonna pick best players. Well, I couldn't tell you what they needed if we're being honest. I think it's the best available. The, the Kings took Deer and Fox in 2017, so they don't need a point guard. But okay, if, we'll if do it's best. In, if we'll it's do in the best. Back of your head, we'll just do. We'll, uh, we'll do best player. I think right. best fit here is probably someone else, but we'll do best player. So with the second pick, the Sacramento Kings in the 2018 redraft, we're going with uh, we're going with Trey Young, one yeah. of the best electric playmakers in the game right now. Uh, great, one of the probably top five offensive players in the league right now. So. Yeah, mm-hmm. pretty easy pick. Uh, I think that was also a no doubter. Um, yeah. But with my third pick, the Atlanta Hawks, they would be selecting DeAndre Ayton. I think he secured himself as one of the better big men in the league. I know he kind of got exposed in the finals, but he was playing against Giannis. What do you expect? He held up his end of the bargain pretty well against um, Anthony Davis. And didn't they play Jokic? Yeah. Jokic. Yeah. I mean, he, he played well. He proved himself, I think, but – I think you got to go with DeAndre Ayton here. So See, I got I, the Grizzlies. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. All right. So I'm going to take Shy Gilgis Alexander with go. the fourth overall pick. I think it's been tough to like give him some credit because he's playing on the Thunder, who have been trying to tank for the last. It feels forever since Kevin Durant left, but I think he's put up a solid base. I think him and Kemba Walker are going to gel well. I think Oklahoma City's probably not going to put much in the win column, but I think. Shy will be happy in this mock scenario to go to a defensive team in Memphis that desperately needs his scoring pre John Morant. Yeah. Um, that's who I would have picked at three. Um, Shea Gilders Alexander is one of the best defenders in the NBA already, and he scores like 23 a game in the first part of this year. So I love that pick. Great pick, Grayson. Um, with the fifth pick, the Dallas Mavericks are, yeah, they're getting really screwed here. They, no more Luca. Um, the Dallas oh, no. Mavericks are going to take Michael Porter Jr. Oh, one of the best young scorers in the league right now. He's he's he was the second best player on a, on a playoff team this year. Um, 
Uh, this is a guy, he's going to score 25, 25 a year for the rest of his career, in my opinion, if he can stay healthy. One of the best scorers in the game. Not a great defender, but a great scorer. Michael Porter Jr. to the to the Mavericks at five. I like it, honestly. Um, at number six, Orlando, I'd go Colin Sexton here. I think he's yeah. electric. I think he is very fun to watch. I think <laughs> he's got a lot of, like, he's got a high ceiling. But do you disagree, Alex? Yeah. Um, I don't care. Colin Sexton is a empty stat. Oh, people said that about Trey Young. Cleveland? People said that about Trey Young. Then he proved he could win in the playoffs. What I think Cleveland, I really Cleveland's think Colin Sexton's right empty now. stats. Really, and I would have, oh. I would have taken Mikael Bridges and not thought twice. Really, well, just my opinion. Well, but listen, he's playing in Cleveland. Not everyone's going to be LeBron. That's James. fine. I agree. He is a great scorer, so it's not the worst pick you could have made. Definitely, it's hard. I mean, LeBron James couldn't even turn around Cleveland the first time. No <laughs> one's turned around Cleveland. He, he took him to the he took him to the finals when that team was bad. Yeah, that, two, that 07 team. I think one of their best players was like, oh, I can't remember the name, but it was the Andrew Ilgowski. Yes. And Anderson Barajal. Yeah, that's there it is. Anderson Barajal. Oh my God. He I mean, was that's, horrible. You literally <laughs> have to have the greatest basketball player of all time to turn that turn that pathetic city around. Yeah. They just changed their name of their MLB team. I got to ask. Go uh, Guardians. What? After the draft. After the draft. Yeah, we'll well, we'll we'll Rhett, don't, don't let me forget. All right. With these, all right, I have the Bulls. So, all right, with the seventh pick, the Chicago Bulls are going to take Nicole Bridges out of Villanova. I think Nicole Bridges has been a nice complimentary piece for the Phoenix Suns. I think Chris Paul did a lot of good for Phoenix and teaching them how to win, teaching them how to play solid basketball. I think he is a great three point shooter. He's good off, I think he's good off catch and shoot. I think Chicago needs that scoring in this time and they need desperately players just to revitalize that city. So, I think McCall Bridges does that for them. I really like that pick. Um, yeah. Great defender. He's going to be a, a eight, 15 to 18 point per game score. Um, really good pick there. Um, with the eighth pick now, so I'm Cleveland. Um, with the eighth pick, I'll tell you what I'm thinking. I'll talk you through my thought process. So okay. here I'm thinking Kevin Herter, no. Mitchell Robinson. That's my Ooh, two here. Toss up. I go, I go Herter. That's what I'm thinking. I think I go Herder. I think I go to playmaking um, shooting guard who can defend. Um, yeah, I like Kevin Herder out of Maryland here. What a, what a steal the Hawks got at uh, 19. Um, yeah, that was that was so, a surprise, this playoffs. Yeah. So, I go Kevin Herder to the Cavs at eight. All right, Palmer, let's see it. What you Over got? Mitchell Robinson? Yeah, I, I like Mitchell Robinson defensively, but he just doesn't give you much. Yeah, I mean, I'd go. With, I'm gonna go with Mitch Robinson because of what's he, what he's bringing you on the defensive side of the ball. He's a seven footer. Uh, he averages like eight rebounds a game. You can't hate that. You gotta love. And he's a pretty good defender. Um, oh, he's but he is the next best player in that draft, I believe. Right, so I got Philly, right? Yeah, you got Philly. Okay, and- so all right, I'm gonna talk my pick through. I think right. that the Philadelphia 76ers take Dante Divincenzo. I love it. Out of, yep. I guess, a Villanova again. Yeah. But I, I think Philly needs – I think with especially with this Ben Simmons stuff, I'm going to put my 2021 thoughts into 2018. I think they could have really used a guard that can shoot well but also play really good defense. It molds well with their identity. And I think that it would have probably taken the pressure off of Ben Simmons trying to be a point guard when he's obviously not. It's just it, – it, ooh, it's tough to watch with that. But I think Dante DiVincenzo really molds well with the Sixers. I like that pick. That's a, that's a pretty good pick. Um, I like it. Um, so I have 11, 11 to Charlotte now. Um, I could go Dev- Devontae Graham, keep him at home. I didn't like what I saw from him this year, so I'm not. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to go, I think I'm going to go with Miles Bridges, who went one pick later. Um, he's an explosive, he, he scored like 15 points a game this year. I think he can be a good defender. Um, yeah, I like, I like Miles Bridges 11 to Charlotte. I don't hate it. Um, so I got 12 to, I don't know. I'm going Jared Jackson Jr. though. Oh that's my right. gosh, we forgot about him. Oh, oh that's no. so bad. I'm so sorry. I mean, I would have picked get, him so long ago. Y'all were probably I mean, screaming at us. I'm mean, gonna oh, get so bad. much hate. This oh, that was good. so bad. Yeah, well, I'm what, so what sorry. I would have picked him so long ago. Well, I mean, Holy obvious crap. pick. I'd, he's yeah. a baller. All right. Okay. So five rebounds. Thirteen. 
to the LA Clippers. Once again, I'm going to go with a controversial pick. I'm going to take Robert Williams out of Texas A&M. I think Robert Williams has blossomed in his third year with the Boston Celtics as a great guy who can play great defense. He's had in the first game, his first playoff game against the Nets, not first playoff, play, first playoff start against the Nets. He had nine blocks and he almost helped the Celtics upset the Nets game one. I think he's really, the injury stuff's a question, but I think he's got a lot of potential and that's why I took him at 13. I like that pick. That's a great pick. Um, he really filled in there at the end mm-hmm. for uh, for uh, Tristan Thompson and who was hurt? It was um, it was Tristan Thompson and it was God. I th- I think he actually was the other guy. We it had, was Tristan. We Thompson shipped out. Them. We shipped out Daniel Tice. Daniel Tice was gone. Yeah. Yes. Okay. That makes sense. So yeah, I like that pick. Um, and I guess with the last pick in the lottery, um, going for the Denver Nuggets, I'm gonna take Jalen Brunson. Um, okay. This guy's a great backup point guard for the for the Mavericks. Um, he runs that second unit unit flawlessly, whenever Luca's not out there, and you can play them together. Um, but for Denver, he would be great with Jamal Murray. Um, yeah, I really like Jalen Brunson there to to the Denver Nuggets. And uh, that's gonna that's gonna conclude our uh, our redraft of the 2018 NBA lottery. There's still some good guys on the board here. You still got Bagley. You still got. Uh, Lonnie Walker, uh, Devontae Graham, uh, Gary Trent Jr. I forgot about Gary Trent Jr. as well. Um, yeah, there's still some good guys here at the end of the lottery. You usually don't see that after the lottery in most drafts. Feels they like usually just fantasy football. Yeah, yeah. It's like, yeah. Um, All but, right, um, what do we think? Cleveland Indians, going to be the Cleveland Gladiators? Guardians. Guardians. I, I think it's cool why they named them Guardians because, like, coming to their stadium, they have a bridge, and it has, like, two, like, Guardians, I guess, on the each side of the bridge. So it kind of makes sense. But the logo looks like it comes out of a comic book. I mean, horrible <laughs> logo. Like, decent name. Can we get a better logo? I mean, who designed this thing? Walt Disney? Come on. I don't think it's that bad. I mean, it's all it's all right, but it's yeah, not. I agree with Red. I kind of like it. It's not, I kind of dig it. I kind of dig I, it. I'm the I'm a fan of the name. Hate the logo though. Horrible uh, logo. Are the Braves next? <laughs> yeah, for sure. We're should definitely the, are, should the next collaboration between the two of us be uh, which logos are next? Well, <laughs> it's well, who's more soft, this or the horns down movement we got going on here? Oh God, <laughs> definitely horns down. Oh yeah. That's bull crap. Just because Texas has the most money and they cry about everything. <laughs> you know, some player's going to come, like, create some creative way to, like, disown it. Like, they're going to hold it up and then, <laughs> yeah. That's what I would do. <laughs> if I ever scored against Texas, I'd shoot the Longhorn. Wouldn't put it down, though. Man. Um, is that is that all we got? Is that anybody else got anything they want to add? I got it. I'm good. Hey, well, um, Grayson, buddy, we appreciate you having you on, man. Yes, sir. Um, you guys are fun. You guys are really fun. I'm really excited to tell, like, my listeners that you guys remind me of a younger part of my take from Barstool hey. Sports. Not afraid to say what they have on their mind and a little bit outside the box, but I love that. I really enjoyed doing this with you guys. Hey, man, that's a, that's a high praise right there. We appreciate that. Um, uh, thank you guys for listening. We appreciate uh, Grayson for coming on. Um, Red and Palmer, it was a pleasure, boys. I'll see y'all again, I'm sure. Um, but uh, thank y'all for listening. Uh, follow us, follow us on Instagram at Down Out Sports. Follow Grayson at uh, shout out your Instagram, Grayson. Uh, it is the it's at the MWP underscore, and we also have my personal account, Gray underscore Man Twenty One. You can find us on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Pod Bay, Pod Bean, or wherever you get your podcasts. All right. Oh, yeah. uh, follow us on Instagram, Down Out Sports. Follow us on Twitter at Down Out Pod. Uh, thank y'all for listening, and uh, y'all have a good one.